It's the uh, Horowitz is yeah, in... Yeah, he's in spirit. He's, he's in spirit. He's actually in chemistry. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, let's say we're in spirit. Okay. So, hi, my name is Christian Johnson, and this is... Dan. And uh, just for prefects, I actually worked with John for like six or seven months in the Clinton Park office, so we're best friends. And uh, <laughs> to make the transition from them, from WebM to Google a little bit easier, since you can imagine it's a pretty big transition. So, that was very fun. So, our project is the RPI directory, new and improved. So, you guys have all used the current RPI directory. Uh, you probably think it's pretty hard to use, we think it's hard to use. It's also not optimized for web devices, so you go to it, it's a pretty outdated web page, you search, sometimes the results don't come back what you, what you expect, I find that a lot, and, excuse me, and we're looking to improve that. Also, there's no standard for it, so you can't access it from anywhere but the RPI website. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a two-fold thing here. We're doing an API backend for it. So you're going to be able to interface programmatically with it, get uh, search results for people. And we're also going to make some example front-end projects, like uh, we're making a web app and an Android app. So some of the technology behind what we're using here, our backend is running on Google App Engine. Has anyone used that before? Yeah, heard of it at least. So that's written in Python. And we're writing the front-end in JavaScript. And also, we're making a sample Android application Obviously, that runs in Java. So, if anyone has any questions as to why we use App Engine, we'd be more than happy to talk about that. But for now, this is what we're using. So, nothing more better than a demo. So, me and Dan whipped up a quick API and a quick web front end for you guys. So, Wow, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Having resolution you increase resolution. If you increase the monitor resolution, it'll make it better. Yeah. Under it set it system. If only the green button in OS 10 did something. <laughs> <laughs> Displays over there and under hardware. Yeah. It, it always defaults to that. I have no idea why. With Max, it always defaults to that. It is. Okay, so you know your lights is so big. Maybe we can make a full screen out here. Oh. <laughs> Peter, what's going on here? What am I doing? What am I doing wrong here? Apple and right Chrome. Can you make right. it even bigger? <laughs> okay, so Yeah. Okay, so this is our sample app here. So you just start searching and my name is Christian Johnson, you see it shows up instantly. And of course it's all like weird. <laughs> But that's it. So um, let's see, Dan, Kim Wolf, and it shows up right away. So it, it's definitely a lot more functionality than the current directory. Um, also, had some fun with Chrome. You can do Christian Johnson. And we can do that. So it's <laughs> pretty cool. Hard coding. <laughs> So this is our API, if you guys are oh. interested in playing around with it. So yes. currently the directory can, can, can sub some sample thing or all the um, Yeah, so it's live right now. Um, you can, this is our API, so you just literally change the name to uh, whatever, um, David, and you'll get results back. Uh, we're going to publish this in a blog post later today. So uh, we still have a lot, of work, a lot of work to do on it. Uh, obviously, there's some bugs in the way that really works with the application we have right now. Uh, we got a lot of things to fix with it. Uh, we still got to make the sample Android app. We're going to look into doing a Google chatbot, so you could chat your search to it, and it would chat you back with the search results, maybe. Uh, maybe an iOS application, Peter. <laughs> 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 and uh, another stretch goal would be interfacing with the union, trying to get some club data in there. So when you search for someone, you can see what clubs they're in. You can search for a club, see what people are in it, maybe. Any possibilities here? So, just want to say thanks. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, are there any privacy concerns as far as the data being really available? Yeah, so we actually kind of ran into that. Well, we didn't run into that, but you guys got that email about some brewery or something. 
um, yeah, that wasn't anything with us, but <laughs> it, does, it does show that like our data, since we're pulling it off of our PI servers, they encode it in little images to like make crawling difficult. Um, we don't have emails on that site right now for that reason, but we're open to maybe making a re-scrambling algorithm or something to make it hard to crawl our site, or maybe just not with that information at all. It's it's all up to decision right now, but it is in our database, but it's not publicly accessible. This thing usually they give it in the first talk. Usually they give you a task is what are all the things that you're going to do in in the semester to come. So so by giving a demo, you affirmed the complaints from the group about it's a vegan project. But you are smart guys, so you did. Yeah, there's a lot of books in that demo. Okay. But okay. Right. Um, did you have a question? No, sorry. Next. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so when we get all the defects fixed and whatnot, uh, would this eventually be incorporated back into the RPI info site? Yeah, so right now, Basically, is it, about a yeah, so this is just uh, our prototype to show you guys what's possible. Um, in the future, we're completely open to moving it into like RPI servers. Uh, we're not like opposed to doing any of that, and we'll be in talks with the uh, IT staff here to maybe replace the directory since if this proved useful, then it should replace the directory in our opinions. John, see the box. Not anymore. Not anymore. Um, the back end, the data source, the back end is that LDAP or something? Or um, we're actually crawling um, the directory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, we're just crawling, the RPI servers, we probably crashed them a few times. Um, test crawling, we just ramped it up to like 6,000 hits in a few minutes and it crashed the servers a few times. So that's all anyone. But um, <laughs> the latency with App Engine is very low. So that's why we chose it, because it automatically scales and unscales your application. We're running into quota limits with App Engine since they're changing the pricing model. So we're going to see if we can work with them to maybe get an extended quota for free since we're at RPI or something. But yeah, we do like App Engine. But yeah. So if you can parameterize, if it is just RPI, instead of RPI, say for example, you want to do the call the same thing, the MIT does not allow, but you can only, question, in the directory, you can make only 10 queries afterwards, it times up. Yeah. I think that is the case, at least the last time we tried. Okay. So you can make it this to for other universities, so that it, the other universities will also have yeah. the op op opportunity. Sure. Considering you're using Google App Engine and Python, how realistic do you think it is that CIO is going to adopt your project? <laughs> well, like like you said, we're using this as a prototype um, because we're familiar with it, and obviously the latency is very very low, so it makes applications like this possible. Uh, we were concerned with hopes when hosting it at RPI, our mobile app wouldn't work because if it's in RPI's firewall, you on 3G connection won't be able to access it. So that's why we chose App Engine. But we're again open to any solution. So we're not going to say, you know, we're staying at Google or don't take it at all. We're open to moving it anywhere, but this is what we have right now. So if anyone has any experience with communicating with CIO that they would believe would help us out in our negotiations, definitely we appreciate your help. Uh, so you mentioned this was a proof of concept. Um, but the JSON spec that you mentioned you'll be publishing later today, is that going to be your JSON spec? Yeah, I mean, right now, well, <laughs> so we, we're modifying it. This is literally a Google, so um, it's it's going to be constantly changing. But the general format is you just pass the parameters and it passes you JSON back. And the specifics might change, but in general, it's pretty standard. So if you want to help us out with the iPhone app, then we'll definitely be willing to work with you on keeping it standard and not change out your So I'd love to write an iOS and a Mac app for you guys. That definitely, like because we have no experience yeah. in that, and we'd appreciate that. Could do, because you do separate versions in that engine? Yeah, we can say that this version is set in stone. Yeah. We'll develop that, and then we'll work in a different version in hand. Yeah, like App Engine hand kind of has like Git branching in it, so you can have different versions of your app running simultaneously. So if we keep one stable, we can do a dev version or something like that. And get back. Have you considered filming your privacy concerns, adding authentication to your program? Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's there's a bunch of ways 
one way that I thought of was OAuth, um, OAuth 2, since that's pretty easy to use on App Engine. Um, our philosophy is that we scraped RPI's directory in about an hour, so if someone really wanted to crawl it, they could get the information. Um, but again, we're open to putting any kind of restrictions or anything that's required. You, may, you would have to possibly change, you add authentication to change it to use LDAP queries, and then query as needed, I guess? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're still uh, deciding what is the best way to go about that. But yeah, we're open to the suggestions. Uh, I was going to ask if you looked into using your RPI's authentication system, making uh, logs and using your RCI to external sites. Yeah, we haven't looked into that. Uh, we don't really know much about that, so we haven't looked into that yet, but that's definitely a possibility. Now that you have this proof of concept API, uh, the applications that you're going to do that app, it's just searching generally? Yeah, so it's just going to be, well, we have a, a big plan going, but generally it's just searching for a name. We have this crazy idea that connects to Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter. Oh, so so like question. if you meet someone, Google Goggles isn't there where you can recognize their faces yet. But um, you type in their name, maybe it shows up their Facebook or their Google Plus or Twitter. You can get more information about them send them an email, add a little contact thing or something. It's all That's all on the roadmap. But for now, it's just searching. OK, well, my next question is going to be about Facebook. And my third question is going to be about self-reporting. Uh, is it possible to set up some sort of system where it is the directory, but then you log in and you can modify the information that it's it, it has on that person? Yeah, I mean, right now, it's just RPI data. So I'm not sure what you would want to change about that. But if we add more. Data to you, you can make like contact information or something. Yeah, it's not so much anyway, yeah. adding more information probably. Yeah, because yeah. there's like contact fields and stuff that are blank for most students. But yeah, we should um, definitely put down the issues on this. That's a good idea. So that what another possibility is the RPA directory keeps changing once they graduate, they no longer names no longer exist. So that you, if you can have a temporal aspect to that right, directory, so that may be another way of uh, keeping He's a junior or a senior in 2011. Then we have something. Yeah. Yeah, we thought about that already. Right? We so have like an alumni there too. Yeah. Is there no like alumni database? Uh, they all. Uh, it would be protected. I mean, as we're following right now, we would generate alumni. We already have that data in our database, so we could generate a list of alumni from our people. From our year, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. Also, we're. I guess since you're all technical, we can show this. We made an admin mm -hmm. page. Yeah. So um, Dan can talk about that since I did the front end, he did the back end. So you can kind of talk about what's going on here. All right. Um, so our application basically loves no cache. Uh, so all the searches you do are cached. And uh, so I'll, I'll search a little bit here. Uh, what's someone's name? Good morning. I already did him. It's already cached. Sorry. Someone that. Jack Huey, H-U-I. Are you here? Yep. Cool. Okay. So um, the graph probably updated already, but I'll let you talk about it actually. All right. So I mean, I can go into the detail of it, but basically, it caches the results. And then as you're typing, you're taking advantage of the fact that it's searching every time you type a letter, and it's caching those results. So once you type a letter that doesn't return the results, it goes back to the previous one and returns those results instead. And that caching makes that possible very fast. Uh, I mean, we don't have a realistic idea of how many hits we're getting because we're doing all the searches ourselves in the same names over and over again. We really know. But, uh, yeah. So you can see App Engine here um, automatically scales your application. So it's running four servers right now to serve our requests. So we hammered this and got it up to about 30 at one time. So uh, you can see how well this scales. But again, we're, we're more than willing to move it to RPI if that's what's needed to keep this project. Does anyone have any sort of questions? Cool. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you.